This is how I use the Fujifilm X-T5 for street photography or basically just like a casual photo walk if you will. Most of the time I would just throw my Fujifilm in my Billingham bag and then off I go. I've been using this bag for over a decade now and it's very reliable and useful. I love the design, I love how it looks and because it's a shoulder bag so this way I don't really have to bring a strap with me or even using a camera clip. The only time I'll probably use a camera strap would be if I know I'm making a video that day. And if that's the case, I will bring my Shimoda Explorer V2 instead of the billing head. This way I can bring more gear with me if I need to. And I will either use the camera strap or the Peak Design Capture Clip whenever I need to free up my hand. But other than that, the Billingham is my go-to bag whenever I go for a photo walk. As for the lens that I use on the Fujifilm X-T5, I've been really enjoying using this kit lens, the 18-55. Like I mentioned on my previous video, I've never used the kit lens before. This is the first time I got it, just to really try it out and see. And personally, I feel like this kit lens is like way better than most of the kit lens that I ever used before. I find it very useful having all of the focal link that I like to shoot with, especially for street on this little zoom lens here. Plus, I don't really need big aperture for street photography. So this little zoom lens works really well because it goes to f4 whenever you start zooming in to 55. But if I'm only using a prime lens, I'll probably lean towards the 35 millimeter. Some of the basic camera settings I would change right away, especially for street photography, would be the sound. Basically, I want to be as quiet as possible so I turn all of the sound to off. Same thing goes with autofocus illuminator. I have this off for the same reason so it's not gonna light up and show my subject that I'm taking photo of them. And since it's Fujifilm I usually shoot both JPEG and RAW so I can play kind of like with the JPEG recipe if I want to but at the same time I still have the RAW file. I also have image display to off this way it saves battery and I really don't need to like check on my photos like chimp all the time. For camera setting, personally I shoot in full manual pretty much most of the time. Especially I got the X-T5 for the tactile feeling of changing the camera settings. Why would I take the phone away in that? I feel like the layout and design of the Fujifilm X-T5 is very simple and straightforward because all of the settings is in front of you. So whichever camera setting you want it in auto, just simply put it in A and you'll still be able to manually control the other settings if you want. And because of that, it's really easy to customize how you really want to shoot. Maybe you like aperture priority better or like shutter priority. If I'm feeling lazy, I do use auto ISO and still keep shutter speed and aperture in manual. Because usually I hold the camera like this where I change the aperture with my left hand and I change the shutter speed with my right hand. So having auto ISO saves me the time to come up here and change the ISO dial. And speaking of ISO, I do have two customized settings for that. One is for day where the minimum is 125 and the maximum I have set it to 3200. And the other one is for whenever I know I'm coming in and out of like low light situations a lot. And now I have the minimum ISO to 125, whereas the maximum ISO is 12,800. Most of the time I'll use the auto ISO one, even at night where I know there's like lights around me or if it's pretty well lit. Unless I'm in a very, very dark situation where I'll use like auto ISO 2, where it goes up to like 12,800. But I generally don't go over 3,200 if I don't have to. And along with that setting, if I'm shooting during the day outdoor where there's no clouds, I will set the white balance to daylight. This way it's easier for me to batch edit later. And if the day is like overcast, then I'll just change it to shade. Now if the day is kind of like with scattered cloud or if I know I'm moving in and out, like indoor and outdoor, I'll simply just switch it to auto white balance and now I'll just deal with it later in post. So this really depends on the different environment that I'm in. By default on the Fujifilm X-T5, if I remember correctly, the right button is where you can change the white balance. And I believe this is pretty much the same throughout all Fujifilm cameras. But if somehow you don't feel comfortable using that button for white balance, you can always customize it. One quick way to do that is to long press the back button and then you'll be able to quickly change all the different buttons on the camera itself 
to the function that you need. So another custom button that I've set is the face detection to the up button here. Since I don't need face detection all the time, so whenever I need to, I'll just like toggle it on or off. Or if I want someone else to take my photo, I'll have this turned on and give the camera to the other person and just half press the shutter. It's almost hard to find a camera with bad face detection nowadays. By default, the left button is for film simulation and I basically leave it as is because I do use this button quite often to play around with film simulation. As for this nameless button up here, I use it for a photometry. Regarding focus settings, I have a video that goes into details on pretty much all of my focus setting on Fujifilm, which I'll link on the side over here. But usually, whenever I'm doing street photography, I usually use back button focus in manual mode. So at the back button focus, the AF on right behind the camera here kind of act as a single auto focus. And whenever I need to track something that's moving continuously, I can just kind of like press and hold on to the AF on button and then it'll act like a continuous autofocus. Again, all of these is done within manual mode. And in order for this to work, you have to change the instant autofocus setting to autofocus continuous. And this is especially useful because I can switch between single autofocus to continuous autofocus. And because oftentimes street photography can be quite unpredictable, so there will be like different objects that goes into your frame in front of your subject. This is especially true whenever you're using a telephoto lens. It happens a lot more often than you think. With this kind of setting to focus, all I have to do is kind of like back button focus and press once on the subject and that's all I need to do. It's not gonna refocus to anything that's in front of the subject I'm trying to take photos of. And if I want continuous autofocus on a relatively fast moving subject, I can just press and hold the back button in order to achieve that. Again, I'm still shooting in manual mode. There's no need to switch to continuous autofocus or single autofocus. All of these can be done with just the back button. Now, since I'm in manual mode already, if I run into situations where I'm trying to take a photo of a reflection or say maybe like a silhouette photo, I use the back button focus once and then micro adjust the focus by using the focus ring manually. And again, because we're in manual mode, so pressing the shutter is not gonna refocus the frame again. It'll simply take the shot. This is like my favorite way to focus on Fujifilm camera and it is super helpful and useful in my opinion. By the way, for manual focus assist, I have focus speed turned on and I have set it to red on high because I find this more visible to my eye so I can tell where exactly the camera is focusing at. I also use the joystick to navigate around the focus point if I'm using the LCD screen with 425 focus point. At the same time, I also use the front command dial to change the size of the focus point. And this really depends on what kind of subject you're shooting in order to have a precise focus. However, if the subject and the focus point is not exactly close to each other, I find that using autofocus area to be a faster way to change my focus point because instead of using and navigate around the focus point by using the joystick, I can just like tap on the screen. In other words, I can just tap on the subject and then use back button focus. And if I'm using the EVF, I'll do pretty much the same thing. Instead of navigating with the joystick, I use my right thumb and the right part of the LCD screen to kind of like navigate around the focus point like so. I find this to be a bit faster than using a joystick. However, I feel like the, the LCD screen on the Fujifilm is not exactly smooth as I expected compared to other camera brands. And that pretty much sums up how I use the Fujifilm X-T5 for street photography. If you like videos like this, definitely check out this one next. That being said, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.